Irvine honors Gordon Bob McCurvey, a World War II veteran and a longtime Irvine resident. This year, Bob celebrated his 96th birthday and was honored by Mayor Donald P. Wagner at the City Council meeting for his outstanding service in the United States Army from 1942 to 1945. During his years of service, Bob earned the title of First Lieutenant and was also awarded three Purple Hearts for sustaining injuries in battle. Bob moved to Irvine in 1971 and has since played an influential role in laying the groundwork for the community. Well, I was uh, going to college at Colorado School of Mines in the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor. And I packed up my stuff in Colorado and came home to San Diego. I wanted to uh, volunteer into the Army or the Navy. I wanted to be a pilot. It was not until April, I guess, that I uh, found out I could get Army pilot training. And so that's when I joined the, uh, the Army then. And I was going to learn to be a, uh, a pilot. I learned to fly a primary trainer and then I landed at uh, a little out of Army regulations. There wasn't an Air Corps then, it was the Army Air Corps, it was part of the Army and the crew was always out there with an ambulance and set up a T to show you which way to land. The T the T was set up for crosswind and I couldn't handle the crosswind, so the Army thought I'd do better someplace else and I washed out of pilot training. <laughs> and uh, I uh, wound up being a, a private then in, uh, in Texas where they train uh, navigators. The company commander that I had there uh, he called me in and he said, uh, I think the Army's wasting your time and his, the Army's time, so I'm sending you to uh, engineer, Corps of Engineer, OCS, and uh, when, well, that's officer candidate school, and uh, when I completed that I was commissioned a second lieutenant in the Army. I was uh, sent overseas and I joined, uh, there were two American beach invasions on D-Day, June 6, 1943. Each beach had a combat engineer group that landed on the beach to assist with Bangalore torpedoes and whatever they could do acting as infantry with an engineer background. And I joined a group that landed on Utah Beach, but uh, it was the 148th Combat Battalion, and they had been training for that beach invasion for about six months. and. Uh, so I had no part in their training on that beach invasion, but uh, prior to the beach invasion that they had been training for, when, when I joined the, the group, well, uh, the group commander, a full colonel, he wanted everyone to be familiar with, with demolition and what uh, explosives the uh, the combat battalions were carrying with them and how to detonate them, I mean right down to cooks and captains and uh, they, you know, weren't trained in explosives. So they turned over to me to organize a class uh, in explosives and, and uh, I organized a class and, and taught explosives before the uh, beach invasion and then in the beach invasion we uh, roll up gas masks 
It weighed, I don't know how much, they must have weighed 20, 30 pounds. <laughs> and uh, we had uh, a uniform over our regular uniform that was gas impregnated. It stunk uh, terribly, but we wore that. We didn't know where the Germans were going to use uh, uh, gas, you know, on the troops that were coming in. They didn't, thank God for that. First off, we're, we're combat troops. And second off, we, uh, if we're not in, in other words, after things were carrying on, you know, in the, after the initial invasion, well, as combat engineers, we were occasionally in combat situations, holding lines, and my second Purple Heart I got, I got uh, from uh, mortar fire, so we were, we were upholding positions, but we normally were not in attack situations. We were backing up. We were first army troops and we were backing up infantry divisions and assisting and picking up mines and that type of thing. They called it the Battle of the Bulge when the 16th of December when the uh, Germans had a major combat situation and they attacked the American lines. We were in, at Aachen, Germany, was the first major town in Germany to fall. I was not in on the Battle of Aachen. We were doing, when we weren't in a combat situation, we would do road maintenance or bridge maintenance or whatever. As combat engineers, we were doing our engineering duty. And outside of Aachen is a river that flows called uh, Eschweiler. And there was a little town of Eschweiler on the river. And uh, we were just sitting uh, at Eschweiler, looking across the river and the Germans were on the other side, they were doing absolutely nothing. And it became pretty obvious to us that the war was probably uh, just about over, you know. That was in December. And all of a sudden, on December 16th, the Germans attacked, and that was the start of the Battle of the Bulge. So immediately, the battalion I was in went down to where they could uh, be in a holding of uh, in their combat position where the breakthrough came. I was sent to a major river in, uh, in Belgium, and I can't tell you what the name of the river or the town was but there was an MP, MP battalion there on what would be the friendly side of the river. And my assignment was to wire that main bridge across the river. If the Germans got down that far to drop that bridge in the river where they couldn't get across farther into, into the American lines. And uh, I showed the MP captain how to detonate the explosives to drop the bridge. Uh, you, we had, you could do it electrically with a little generator that would generate a spark and, and explode the cap, which you know, would explode the charge. And if that failed due to a cut wire or something, there was a backup system where you could uh, have a fuse and backup cap with a fuse light, lighter on it, and I, I, I set the backup system. I got the MP captain out there and showed him how to operate both of them, and told him he be, should have the most trusted sergeant stationed at that place where 
to set that bridge off at 24 hours a day. Be sure he had somebody there, his most trusted people. And I left and uh, went up and joined the battalion that was deployed up uh, uh, where the breakthrough came. The combat battalion then was deployed with uh, anti-tank uh, bazookas, which is kind of a joke, really, but that's where they were departing out in, in the foxholes in the snow, you know? Cold, cold, cold. The one thing I always carried was dry socks. I got shot in the in the side of her and the helmet deflected deflected the bullet and the bullet came out the top here. You had a liner in there here and it was close enough that it went through the liner and just grazed my scalp enough that I got some blood in my hair and one thing or another and that's when I got my first purple heart. Sent it home and my dad wrote, I boxed it up, sent it home. My dad says, you're trying to kill your mother. <laughs> oh, second Purple Heart, we were deployed as infantry. Uh, primary in a holding position rather than an attack position. And uh, the Germans were mortar fire away, you know. Uh, probably 60 millimeter mortars or whatever they call them, but we would call them 60 millimeter, they're small mortars. And uh, mortar attack, they killed Sergeant White. And uh, they got a piece of meat off of my side of here. I got hit with mortar fragments for the second purple heart. The third one was uh, Christmas night company in the battalion that had rations to for turkey dinner and everything and the line companies uh, were deployed out uh, in various places in the snow with nothing but a bazooka and to watch for tanks and so I'd gone out to make sure that everybody had part of the turkey rations because they were out in box holes and one thing or another and a German tank round they fired at the jeep, missed the jeep and uh, it hit the ground right alongside of the jeep. It exploded of course and the shrapnel from the tank round, well I got a piece of shrapnel here and lost my teeth on the right side. And I got a piece of shrapnel through here and these fingers don't work on them. It's just like your hands asleep. When I close my fist, the fingers go closed and when I open it, they go open, but they don't work, you know, roll this way. That was my third purple heart. I was in a tent hospital for maybe six weeks or something like that. Well, they sewed up my cheek and and they attempted to attach these nerves here, but they couldn't do it. Didn't have the at that time didn't have the you know no wherewithal to do it in a tent hospital. What I remember most about the tent hospital was every four hours a nurse would come around and roll you over and give you a big shot of penicillin in the butt every four hours. <laughs> that was the wonder drug that saved a lot of lives, you know. When I got out of the service in 1946. Well, I went to work for the uh, State Division of Highways 
I was a, a engineer on highway projects. You go down through Oceanside and just south of Camp Pendleton, the bridge over the river down there, and one thing or another. I came up to Irvine. I came up to, uh, to Orange County. Uh, contractor up here uh, was looking for somebody to do a project for him. He had uh, put in a pipeline across the future freeway to go in. To, I guess it's a 90, 99, whatever. You go up to a riverside up there and he was having trouble getting compaction and he wanted to know if I'd come up and, and do whatever needed to be done to, so he could get, you know, finish his project. So I went out there and then uh, we became uh, good friends. And uh, I went to work for him as a bid and build uh, where I would bid my projects. He'd hire me on superintendent's wages I would bid the projects I wanted to bid, and then uh, I'd take care of them, and uh, I'd get 25% of the, the profit, which was a good deal for me. And uh, to go back to your Mr. City, uh, this particular contractor in Orange County, they didn't have very many big machines. He had two small drag lines. Drag lines are cranes you put a bucket on and you pull the bucket and you pick up earth with it. And uh, the Irvine Company uh, wanted uh, to do some work down in the back bay and he had two of these small machines. So he put the two small machines out there and uh, they wanted uh, the superintendent to take care of what the two small two small machines were going to dig. And the gentleman with the Irvine Company was uh, Bill Mason. And uh, Mason told me what he wanted done. And, and he said, boy, we're not moving much dirt. And I said, no. I said, well, he says, I hired you. Pamela Arrow had the only two drag lines in the county. And he said, I needed a man to put out here and I hired you as a superintendent. He says, no, as a superintendent, tell me what you'd do. I said, the first thing I'd do would be get rid of these two small drag lines. I know a person out in Riverside County that has some big drag lines. And I said, I'd move these little drag lines out of here and get the big drag lines in. And so Bill Mason says to me, well, how soon would that take? I says, I could call this afternoon, probably get them moved in here tomorrow and have them working here in a day and a half, two days. Good operators on them. Okay, he says, do it. So I called up and moved in two big drag lines for him. When I called up uh, L.S. Hawley, who owned the drag lines, he had good operators. Hawley said, uh, who's paying the bill? And I says, the Irvine Company. He says, they got money, are they good for it? I says, they got money, they're good for it. <laughs> So we moved into big drag lines and uh, Bill Mason and I made lasting friendship over that. Just a hell of a nice guy, a great guy Bill, Bill Mason was. In the city of Irvine, well my gosh, I've laid a lot of water lines for the Irvine Ranch Water District. And so everything from Jeffrey to Culver and Barranca to uh, Irvine Boulevard wasn't through then, uh, was all the background improvements uh, were under that contract. And we wow. put in a, all the backbone water system in and backbone sewer system in. 
and then the tracks followed. We saw model homes over uh, in a different part of Irv what is now Irvine, and they were going to build homes up. These homes that I live in here now at the Racket Club were built in about, let's see, 71, I guess. And uh, so uh, we looked here and we thought this would be a great place to live. So we bought this house and uh, at that time the Irvine was in the county. The mailing address was Santa Ana. <laughs> and uh, there's been a lot of changes in Irvine since then. <laughs>